One of the things that makes Ableton Live the best tool for running tracks on stage is the ability to work quickly. And in fact, in last week's tutorial, I showed you how you could quickly edit your stems in Ableton Live. If you haven't seen that yet, click the link in the description. But if you're editing stems uh, uh, to duplicate song sections, delete song sections, then the next step you have to take to make this sound great and work live is you should be adding crossfades between your song sections. Let's talk about how to do that. Now, uh, what we did last week is something like this. We would take a chorus, I'd do Command Shift D to add a second chorus there. Now, based on the content you're using and the way it was recorded, that's probably not gonna sound super smooth. For example, if you have a drum uh, part where maybe someone's uh, doing a cymbal swell, they're hitting a cymbal, if you cut that just wrong, uh, it's gonna sound off. It's gonna sound uh, a, a little weird. So one of the easiest ways to fix that is to add a crossfade between those edited song sections. Here's how easily we can do that. Now, typically what I'll do is I'll zoom in at Ableton Live uh, to uh, around that song section, I'll right click to change my grid to be quarter notes so I can see this. And I typically go uh, uh, about two quarter notes on either side of this. So on the left hand side of my edit, on the right hand side of my edit, uh, you could change the amount of time that you want based on the song. And then I click the unfold button for that song section and do command option F. And what that's gonna do, if I click into the drums here, you could see uh, it automatically applies a crossfade. Now in this example, it looks like the drums were an in. So let's find something that was in. I think this is mainly keys. Yep, so you could see some key stuff there. Organ looks like it's not in. Keys one is slightly there. Keys two is slightly there. Uh, and so with this crossfade added in, what's nice is I can move this crossfade handle and adjust this a little bit. Let's go to piano. So I could shift where that crossfade happens. I can make it a little louder if I need to a little bit quieter. Uh, and I can trim this up to make this work just perfectly uh, based on how my song flows and what's happening, which is great. Um, also, you may end up going, okay, I actually don't need a crossfade between this particular song section here. So I could, uh, you know, drag this out to, to move this. Um, I could shift this, uh, this clip over to get rid of the crossfade like that. Uh, we could get rid of this fade here. Uh, and we could just crossfade individual clips or move them out. Sometimes what I end up doing is maybe trim the clip back and I add just a crossfade to the end of this to give it a little bit of space. Uh, that often helps if I have like a, a drum part where the cymbals are swelling or they hit a cymbal uh, and then we go into a low section. I might trim that drum part to be just a, a little different. So go through your individual stems, add crossfades as needed, adjust those. Uh, and that's gonna really help smooth between those sections. Now, let me talk about something in particular. If you're doing this in a playback context and you have guide cues, slate tracks, a, a cue track, something that says what your song sections are, you've also got to consider that. So in this particular example, what we did is we took our course and we added another course and then we go into our interlude. So what I'm gonna do just quickly, just make a note. Okay, so there's my interlude cue, that works. I'm gonna replace this one with my chorus cue. So I'm gonna delete this. The easiest way for me to do that is just to go over to this cue here. I hold option and I drag to duplicate that. Uh, and I add a secondary chorus cue here at that repeat of the course. Now, those are just a couple tips and tricks that are gonna help you um, uh, use stems on stage in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. Uh, and, and do this really, really quickly. If you want more tips like this tip, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post new content. And if you're looking for a great way to get started, download my free tracks template for Ableton Live 9 intro and higher. So if you're using 9, 10, 11 intro standard suite, that template will work for you. You can find that at fromstudiostage.com slash template. Go there, download it for free, and get started with using tracks in a way that's efficient, flexible, and stable. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.